So this is a 2008 Mitsubishi Outlander. Um, we're driving it along and had both the ABS light come up and the ASC off light come up. It turned out to be two separate faults. Uh, one was the steering angle sensor and the other one we're going to work on in this video which is the uh, ASC pump. Basically uh, it's a known issue to Mitsubishi but they're obviously not bothered about doing anything about it anymore. Um, in America they did issue a repair kit as part of a technical service bulletin but Mitsubishi UK apparently don't recognise that. Mitsubishi have quoted around £1,200 to replace the pump um, and you can replace it yourself so that's what we're going to do in this video. And this is the warning that you'll see and you also do get a confirmed code. The issue that we have is a C121D which is abnormal pressure sensor in for the brakes and um, you may get other codes as well it's not the only code that determines there's an issue with the pump so i've gone ahead and disconnected the battery and wedged the brake pedal to the floor just to reduce the amount of bleed that will be required at the end of the procedure i do have to excuse the weather it is raining but we've removed the engine cover already and just so you know where to look for the abs or asc bit of both pump it's that unit down there with the brake pipes going into it with the ECU attached as well. The ECU and the pump are a combined module. I think you can take them apart once you've got it off, but obviously that's not what I'm going to be interested in. I'm only interested in replacing the whole unit. This is also the same for the uh, Citroen C Crosser and the Peugeot 4007. They are essentially the same model as the Mitsubishi Outlander. But the thing to check, um, which we'll cover in a bit, is that you get the right pump number because it needs to be exactly the right spec or she could have issues getting them to talk to each other. So first of all, we're going to start on getting this area clear so we can get to the pump down there. And it's probably going to start with taking off this huge air box. So you'll need an 8mm socket to remove the first two bolts here. And then unclip the air box. And when you've got the air box apart, I'm going to undo this clip here with a 10 mil. Now after you've undone the Jubilee clip and disconnect this sensor here. And when you've got the 10 mil off, you're going to disconnect the MAF sensor there. Um, and then the air box will come out and you can start to see what else you need to get to to get to the pump which is there. So I've bent the air pipe round out the back just holding it out the way with a screwdriver to enable better access to the pump. The next thing is to remove the plug for the brain of the ABS pump by pushing in the black tab at the top and releasing the orange one to pull down which removes the plug. You then got to give it a bit of a wiggle to get it out. So that's it with the plug removed which we've just tucked under the fuel pipes for the meantime enabling us to get to the pump. So this is the new pump here, this will be the plug, the four points for the hydraulic lines on the top the two at the side. There is also a connection here and if we look at the old pump we can see that there is something there. Uh, not quite sure whether it's just a nut yet or a bolt. I haven't got it off but we'll have a look as we go. So this is the tool we're going to use to undo the 12mm brake pipes. The two outer ones at the top left and right are the ones that are 12 mils. And this is the tool we use to open up the other 10 mils, which are the two at the back and the two on the side. So the attachment that sits in the side of the pump there that holds the pump to the bracket is this little 12mm bolt here. So just in the middle of getting the pump out you can see at the bottom left one of the lugs has raised out but the one on the right is proving a bit tricky so just giving it a lever out with a bar. So this is the old pump removed. You can see we lost one of the bungs in the fight um, but the new pump's got two more so it's not a big deal. We didn't have to unscrew them from the below just pull them out which obviously takes a bit of doing because they're wedged in there by that ledge. Okay, so you can see there everything you've got to get access to when the pump's removed. Having a bit of trouble with the studs underneath the pump that hold these bungs, 
I found the best way is to get the bung off the stalk and then put it in place in the bracket first. Okay, so now the new pump is in place uh, through the bungs underneath there. Uh, and it works best by putting the bungs on first and then slotting the pump in place. So the first step is to get the bolt that goes through the pump on the bracket there through from the opposite side of the car um, as if it's going that way. Uh, sorry, he didn't see that that way. Um, and then it'll be a matter of reconnecting the pipes. So that's the pump in, back in place with all six brake lines connected. Did put a bit of fluid in the holes before reconnecting it to try and reduce the amount of air in the system. And next we're just going to reconnect connect the electrical plug. So that's the electrical plug back in place. Now it's going to be a matter of reconnecting the MAF and the air box and getting the intake sorted. Okay, so that's the pump reinstalled and all the peripherals, you can just see it, just the outside the strut bar. All peripherals reconnected, air box, MAF, and uh, we're going to turn it on and see what happens. Right, so now the moment of truth, we're going to uh, check the car, turn it on and see if we get the code. So the ABS light is on, but it's gone out. The car has started, no ASC warning. That's us calling for an inspection and a service because we've not done that yet. But ASC warning has gone out.